How old were you when you wrote People Gotta Move? I was 18. I wrote it because my girlfriend at the time, Anna Marie, didn't want me to uh, go into show business. She thought it was a fool's errand. She wanted me to continue on with my college studies and, you know, get married and basically that, that run. And uh, I was determined, you know, to become a musician and a successful one. So I wanted to prove to her that I could write a hit song overnight. I said, tomorrow I'll come back. And I said, I'm going to play you something that someday is going to be a big hit. And she kind of rolled her eyes, of course. And uh, so I went back to visit her the next day after school, started playing her People Gotta Move. You gotta move, blip, blue blah, blah, blah. And I was telling her, come on, you got to picture the, the horns and all that. And her father just had walked in. And her father looked at her. I saw through the corner of my eye and went, <laughs> keep away from him. Who was that 18 year old boy then? Oh, geez, Italian, Canadian, uh, always out on the weekends, wore a big open shirt with a big medallion and my hair down to here and as big as I could possibly make it. <laughs> always looking for volumizing shampoos. <laughs> uh, but determined to be successful. You gotta move. People gotta move. You gotta move. People gotta move. Ah, you gotta move. I was 20 years old and I, I had made all the record companies in New York and I'd saved up some money, went to Los Angeles, was there for three, four months and nobody wanted to sign me. And then I saw Herb cut across the lot. Because Herb Albert was at that point a big artist. Well, more than a big artist, uh, Herb Albert was the A in a and Records. And a and Records, you know, had artists like The Carpenters and Cat Stevens, you know, and Sergio Mendez and Quincy Jones. Uh, you know, I thought they were really a great label for me to be on. So I ran to Herb Alpert and um, he asked me what I wanted. I said, let me play for you. And I played him People Gotta Move, Mom Coco, Crazy Life, Powerful People, on the guitar, mm -hmm. which was really not that very good. <laughs> And he looked at me and said, welcome to the family, okay. It's a crazy life, a hazy life, a mixed up jumble face in life. We were staying at a place called the Hallmark Hotel and all the artists stayed there. I met Marvin Gaye and a whole bunch of other people there, Curtis Mayfield. So I went to the poolside and I was sleeping and I, I heard, it's a crazy life, a hazy life. And I said, wait a minute. I think that's my song. I was <laughs> someone is singing my song. So I, I like like it was breadcrumbs, I started following it. And I finally saw Stevie Wonder with his brother. And his brother said, Hey, Stevie says, there's the cat with the hair, he said. <laughs> and uh, so Stevie stood up and we exchanged hugs and we talked about the record and I talked about how much I, you know, admired him. And then Stevie just said, I don't know where he says, you know what, Chaka Khan can't uh, come with me on tour. He says, Do you want to come and do seven or eight concerts with me? I said, uh, am I going to get killed? You know, um, is this my death warrant? You know, Stevie says, no, no, my audience will, will, is a really musical audience. They'll, they'll dig you. So I said, okay, let's, let's do it. The record was released and People Gotta Move started going up the charts. And I just was g about to leave to go open up for Stevie in the Cincinnati Coliseum. And I got a call and it was Don Cornelius and his unmistakable voice. And we're fortunate to have with us a truly remarkable talent, a great welcome gang from Mr. Gino Vanelli. He said, would you like to do Soul Train? And I said to Don, I'd love to do Soul Train, but I said, 
I have to tell you something. He said, and what's that? He says, I'm a white guy, you know? He says, I know. He says, oh, but over here at Soul Train, we, we consider you, he says, off-white. <laughs> and things started taking off.